On the day it was announced that England's managing director of cricket, Hugh Morris, would be joining Glamorgan, the Welshmen had another reason to celebrate as they reached the semi-finals of the Yorkshire Bank 40 with a four-wicket win with seven balls to spare over Yorkshire in Leeds. The Vikings gave a debut to 18-year-old Jonathan Tattersall, but he was the latest man to be bowled by Michael Hogan, this time off the inside edge before he'd scored. He was out to the second legal ball of the match while Alex Lees fell to the 13th as he took on a suicidal single and was easily run out by Andrew Salter. It was a difficult start for Yorkshire, who also saw Dan Hodgson take one on the chin from Simon Jones early on. Yorkshire, of course, had nothing to play for anyway, while Glamorgan knew that they had to win to stand a chance of making it through to the semi-finals. Even that may not have been enough, it all depended on results elsewhere, for they had increased their chances by thrashing Leicestershire in Swansea on the previous day, a win which improved their net run rate no end. They were set back in Headingley by a fine third-wicket stand between Hodson and Kane Williamson, who now got the ball rolling for their side. Williamson took on the spinners, striking both Salter and Dean Koska for delightful sixes in successive overs, as the home side made it to 86 for two by the halfway stage of their innings, a good recovery after the difficulties of before. Hodson was able to help himself to his second one-day 50, getting there off 63 balls from which he'd struck five fours. It was an impressive performance from the 23-year-old keeper, who's put in some solid knocks in what has been a struggling one-day team this year. He took his partnership with Williams to 100, made in 22 overs. The Kiwi International was out for 45 when he found Jones off Jim Allenby, with a total on 107 for three in the 25th over. Adam Lai then joined Hodgson to try to pick up the rate, something they managed to do with a six apiece in their partnership of 55, which used up the next nine overs was not exactly going to plan for Glamorgan, but they at least were not allowing their opponents to get away from them in spite of these shots. Hodgson had moved on to a career-best 90 when he sliced a drive off Graham Wagg to be caught by Koska, but Lythe kept going, striking his second six, as he looked to post as big a score as possible for his team. Jack Leaning also cleared the rope as the 200 was brought up a little later than Yorkshire would have liked, most probably. Lyde fell for 44 at the end of the penultimate over as Hogan hit the stumps again. Yorkshire then ended their 40 overs on 215 for five, a total Glamorgan would have fancied chasing down. But they lost both openers in the first seven overs of their reply. Gareth Rees hooked Ian Wardlaw down Oliver Robinson's throat at long leg while well, Mark Wallace timed a flick off Mo and Ashraf well enough, but hit the ball straight to the same fielder to leave with his side on 33 for two. Glamorgan do have plenty of fine one-day batsmen in their ranks, and one of them, Allenby, took advantage of this largely inexperienced attack. It was the innings of Chris Cook which proved to be the vital one, though. He chose his moment perfectly to play a delightful and hugely significant innings. He played a whole number of shots to keep his side right up with the run rate required, passing a 50 as he did so off 52 balls. With a total on 113 and 103 needed off 18 overs, Glamorgan lost Allenby, who was bowled by Williamson for a fine 40. But Cook importantly carried on, hitting a couple of maximums, including this one off leaning to take the runs required down to 56 off the last nine overs. But on 84, Cook was stunned by an almost unbelievable catch in the deep by Robinson. We can't show it to you, but just take a look at Peter Willey's reaction. That will tell you how good it was. Marcus North was then bowled by Ashraf for 25, and now Glamorgan were left with 42 to get off the last six overs. Was no longer a breeze for them. Well, it wasn't until Wag came in and did this. The first six left 31 to get off the last four overs, but he then smashed three sixes in five balls off Rich Pyra to just about ensure that this game was his team's. It was a wonderful cameo from Wag, a real character in this game and one who now produced something special just when it was needed. It was awesome stuff from the all-rounder and now only 13 were required off the final three overs. 
Wag was out for a 17 ball 31 at the end of the 38th over, leaving it to Murray Goodwin to take his side over the line and into the semi-finals with a four towards the end of the penultimate over. Glamorgan had won by four wickets with seven balls to spare and the celebrations could start. In the end, thanks to Somerset's win in Bristol, Glamorgan took the best runners-up spot into the semis, where they will now meet holders Hampshire at the Aegeus Bowl in September. They got there courtesy of their net run rate, which was a fraction better than Northamptonshire's, who also finished on 17 points, as did the Group C winners Somerset. <laughs>